Welcome back. My name is Pastor Terry, and you have joined Sherwood New Life Church here online, and we are so glad that you are here. Let's pray real quick. Lord, I just pray that you will just be with us and speak through your word. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we are going to um, look at 1 Samuel chapter 13, and we're going to look at the price of disobedience. And uh, this is something, have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered why you have to obey God even when it doesn't make sense to you? You know, that's an important lesson to learn. It really is. And sometimes it just doesn't make sense to us. But we are going to look at 1 Samuel 13, and we are going to look at King Saul. Now, if you were with us last week, you heard me talk about uh, the king that the people wanted and insisted that they have because they wanted to be like everyone else around them, the nations around them. They wanted a king. And while it wasn't the best thing for them, God gave them what they wanted. And it is going to be difficult on them for many, many decades to come, centuries to come, um, because it wasn't the best thing for them. But they got what they wanted, and they now have Saul as their king. And we're going to see today how Saul messed up. He was disobedient. He was disobedient. And um, here in 1 Samuel 13, he has, um, there have been a, a few uh, victories over the Philistines, and the Philistines are ramping up to fight yet again um, the Israelites. And Samuel, who is their, um, who is God's leader for them, um, you know, for uh, religious leader, and he is separate from the king, but the king asks Samuel for direction from God. He is God's messenger. Samuel is God's messenger, so to speak. And so Samuel gives Saul a message here, and he says, you need to go to a certain place and wait for seven days until I come to you. And that's where we're going to pick up. Um, 1 Samuel 13, verse 8, it says, Now he, meaning uh, Saul, says, Now he waited seven days according to the appointed time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattering from him. In other words, they were getting scared. They knew the Philistines were coming, and they were getting scared, and they were starting to run away. In um, a couple of verses um, before this, it says that they were hiding themselves in caves and thickets and in cliffs and cellars and in pits. And uh, so when Saul sees that they're scattering from him, in verse 9, it says, So Saul said, Bring to me the burnt offering and the peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. Now, why is that wrong? That was wrong because Saul was not a priest. He was not the priest. Only the priest could make those offerings. I say, well, so what? Samuel wasn't there. No, he wasn't there. But Saul was unwilling to wait for Samuel to get there. And he forced things himself. He tried to do things himself. That sound familiar? If you're disobedient, have you ever tried to force things and take care of it yourself? Well, this is Saul. And then we see um, in verse 10, and it came about as soon as he finished offering the burnt offering, that behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him and to greet him. But Samuel said, what have you done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattering for me and that you did not come within the appointed days and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash. Therefore, I said, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal 
and I have not asked for the favor, favor of the Lord. So I forced myself and offered the burnt offering. You see what Saul's doing here? He's making excuses for himself. I love how this sentence runs on and on. Because I saw that the people were scattering from me and that you did not come within the appointed days and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash. Therefore, I had to do something. So I forced myself to do what I didn't wasn't supposed to do, but I knew I had to take care of it myself. That's basically what he's saying. And, and, and then he tries to um, rationalize it to Samuel. And Samuel said to Saul, this is verse 13, you have acted foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. In other words, his children um, would inherit the throne and his children's children and so on through the ages. But now your kingdom shall not endure. The Lord has sought out for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has appointed him as ruler over his people because you have not um, kept what the Lord commanded you. You see, God asks us to do some, one thing, you know, he, he gives us a command. He, he gives us an assignment and we are not to do any more or any less. He wants us to be obedient. And because of his disobedience, Saul is going to pay the price of that disobedience and the kingdom will be taken from him. And we will see um, later on in, in 1 Samuel, if you keep reading in the book, he eventually dies and so do his, um, his sons. And the throne goes to someone else. Have you ever heard of King David? He is the one that, the, that gets the throne later on in the book of Samuel. But I want to um, point out that just two chapters later, in the 15th chapter, I'm not going to read about it now, but God gives Saul another commandment. He gives him another assignment. And he says through Samuel, he says, you go destroy the Amalekites and you take nothing for yourself. Now, some people have said, actually a lot of people have said, the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament because in the New Testament, we see this God of love and mercy and Jesus dies on the cross um, to save us from our sins and, and that is love and he, he brings peace and, and the God of the Old Testament just destroys people. Well, they are one in the same, and his reasons for, for doing what he does, commanding what he does, he never destroys a people unless they are given many, many chances. This is a bigger study. It's a broader study. Um, but trust me, this is the same loving God, um, but he has... He has given them chances. He has given them chances and they have not turned to him. And so he's going to give the land to the Israelites. And so he tells Saul, King Saul, through Samuel, destroy the Amalekites and do not take anything for yourself. You see, this, this was not something that they were to take gain, you know, to get things for themselves. And so um, Saul leads the army and they destroy the Amalekites. But you know what? They take sheep, they take cattle, they take, um, they, they take the best of everything. And when Saul meets him or when Samuel meets Saul, he says, 
what have you done? I did what God told me to. That, that's what Saul says. And Samuel says, well, then what is that bleeding sheep that I hear? And what is that mooing cow? Um, not exactly the words of that scripture, but close enough. And in this, God has given Saul a second chance, and he blows it again. He blows it again. He disobeys, and he tries to cover up. And, um, and Samuel looks at King Saul and says, no, no, this is the end. This is the end. Your children will not see the throne. Now, we might say, what was the big deal? Well, let me tell you just in a, in a nutshell real quick. We may not understand the reason for God's commandments or for what he tells us, but there are reasons. They're just not known to us, and it is best for us to listen and to obey. What was the reason for, for Saul um, getting in trouble for making those sacrifices? From the very beginning, God made those two offices, the king and the priest, separate. They were The king was not supposed to do what the priest does. The priest was not to do what the king did. Why is that? Well, the reason was because the nations all around them were, um, they were wicked people and they all had a, a king priest office, meaning that the king was the priest. And even sometimes um, they were considered deities and God had called his people to be separate, to be different. And we are the same way. God has called us to be separate and to be different. We are not to be like everybody else around us. And if you look at your reasons for wanting to disobey God and wanting to take things into your own hands and doing it yourself, it's usually so you can be like everybody else because you want something that everybody else has or, um, you know, whatever it might be. It's usually because we want to conform to society and culture around us, but we are called by God to be different, to be different. And we need to be obedient. And the price of disobedience is great. It is great. The throne was taken away from Saul. God's not going to take a throne away from you, obviously. Um, however, there might be something else that you may miss out on. Maybe it won't, it will be something you don't even know about, but you want God's best in your life. And in that end, we want to be obedient. God knows what is best and it is in our best interest to follow his directions and be obedient. Lord, help us to be obedient this week. Help us to follow your word and follow your voice and be obedient. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here this week. If you would like to give to the uh, ministries of the church, you can go to SherwoodNewLife.org and follow the give button and leave us a prayer request if you have one. If you could hit the like and subscribe button, that would be great. And also to let you know, next week we will not be having a service. We will be at the, um, at the old high school stadium, which is now the middle school stadium. And at 10 o'clock, in the morning and we will um, be worshiping together with uh, many of the churches here in Sherwood. Come down and join us. It's free. There will be food, bouncy houses, worship, all kinds of things. We'd love to see you there. Have a great week.